Hello and welcome to the Billionaire's Bible. I am Billionaire Tanner. And I'm Billionaire Sam. In this video, we're going to teach you how we, in this video, we're going to teach you how we became overnight billionaires with three easy, in this video, we're going to teach you how to be, in, <laughs> what the fuck, Billionaire Tanner? <laughs> Belvedere been drugging you again in the morning? <laughs> we're going to have the editing, the PR team scrub all of this. I only need a perfect curated image. In this video, we're going to teach you our easy path to billionairehood that we learned in our time manifesting being billionaires. This is the secrets, as it were, into the life of luxury, privilege, and power that so many of us dream of. You're watching Rich Self, Poor Self. Let's get into the show. First step to becoming a billionaire is to identify as being a billionaire. It's so mindset based. Yeah. I personally could never have become a billionaire overnight if it wasn't for the one simple trick of just changing my perspective. Do you know what I mean? I have invented the world's first best blood testing machine. And I just need six angel investors to get in now to go to the top together. Reinventing the medical industry. Those they said a woman yeah. couldn't do it. <laughs> they said a woman couldn't do it. <laughs> Deep cuts. Yeah, I know. Well, I got my big dumb hat so I can look like Elon Musk drumming up support for racists at the border. You really do have a billionaire vibe right now. This is another point we can maybe touch on is obviously dressing like a billionaire. You're reminding me right now of the Jeff Bezos Vogue shoot where he's kind of trying to be, I think they shot it in Utah or it might have been Arizona, but like they shot it in the wild, wild west and he's like doing the cowboy hat thing. This is how you look like just a normal guy, a normal rural American, a rural American, <laughs> a hat of the people. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the basics. Yep. Fashion wise. Exactly. What are these called again? Opalettes? Uh, Epalots? Epalet? Epalets. Epalet. You know, they kind of have like a military dignity <clears throat> to them, reminding nations everywhere that we can topple whatever regime we want if they have the uranium and the lithium that we desire. I feel like a sort of a sentient ventriloquist. Dummy. Sentient ventriloquist. <laughs> or like, yeah, maybe a robot that Elon Musk created for his own, you know, perverse pleasures. But I got too sentient and I'm suing it him. It all went tits up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you fell in love with the woman that he assigned to care for you. <laughs> Have you seen that film? What was the one where the woman had sex with the fish? Uh, fish man. No. Swim ocean man. It was like a... Artsy. Water life, life of water, like shape of water, trying. shape oh. of water. Yeah, I was getting there. I really was like, he's just taking the piss. I have to take this off because it's 75 degrees. Yeah, I'm wearing faux Ooh. leather pants in 99 degree weather for you guys. Don't say that billionaires are selfish, okay? People think that being a billionaire is just about exploiting labor, but according to a short that I saw on YouTube today, really being a billionaire and having a billionaire mindset is literally about solving problems. And if we look statistically, at the problems that billionaires are solving to get their wealth, it's how to be born into intergenerational wealth. Mm -hmm. And in terms of having creative ideas, I really think such a key is having a tiny little golf course in your office. Tana, you've like historically been labeled on this here channel, a bit of a soy boy, a bit of a beta male. I know you were kind of involved in the beta movement for a while. What <laughs> is it that's allowed you to go from that poverty peasant mindset to the dominator that you are now? How'd you get there? Well, mainly I went from thinking about how to make money and started thinking about how to become money. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally word for word for the short today where he's like, you got to stop thinking about how to make money and about how to earn money. <laughs> mm, so true, bestie. <laughs> and mainly that's been through doing sexual favor favors on yachts with uh, rich men in Ibiza. So I saw a TikTok today, I already told you this, that said if women could sleep their way to the top, there would be a lot more women at the top. Mm. I imagine you've had to throw out a lot of flannel shirts. Oh, plenty of flannel shirts, pretty much whole wardrobe. This is actually, I had to dig this out of the costume box and now it's the only outfit I have left, <laughs> but it's, you know, the price I will pay for becoming, you know, sort of like stripped of any like real human soulful identity. I'm, I'm just going to wear this like a cartoon character, like an evil 90s cartoon villain. It's giving you during finals week in college when you hadn't done laundry. Oh, that was in my very poor, poverty stricken millionaire days. Can't so <laughs> hard to relate or to even like give a shit empathize even at the most basic level with the poor person I used to be oh yeah ever anyone else know what it's like to <laughs> endure the thralls of uh, millionaire poverty so my parents had a time when they were literally too ashamed 
to go into the upscale country club because the bank had reappropriated our Lamborghini after it f- we found out that my dad was committing fraud. Mm. But thankfully, uh, he was a friend of the judge, so no jail time was done, and he was actually That's then became good. the CEO of the country club. And so all was restored, which is a Quite good a reminder to, to any... Story. Exactly. You anyone who's watching, like, the universe has your back. And even through the greatest... Mm-hmm trial a human being can face in this world you could still rise above when god closes a lamborghini he opens a country club for you sometimes (laughs) and that's been kind of sort of an anchor mantra for me because i do feel like a big part of being a billionaire being able to overcome setbacks people saying you're not a billionaire the bulletproof glass of your electric vehicle just shattered. No, it didn't. That's a matter of your (laughs) perception, okay? Quantum physics tells us that how we perceive reality is reality. So just start perceiving a different reality. Stop looking at the reality that you want to see, which is the broken window. It's literally just about deciding to be rich and having the moral courage to not be a lazy poor. Yeah, having the moral courage to not just earn money, but to make, not to make money, to... Don't remember which one it is. It's don't make money. You guys make get the it. Literally get in with print it. The, Hyperinflation. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the pause. You'll be fine no matter what. You're a billionaire. I saw um, Jeffrey Bezos, who should rebrand as Little Jeffy Bezos. Because <laughs> imagine if his <laughs> name Jeffy was just Baby. Little Little Kisses, Little Bezos. <laughs> Bezos. He. I read an interview with him saying that he didn't. He doesn't like music. They were like, Who, who's I your favorite that. musician? I learned that in the Vogue article. And doesn't I think that, that make was sense? The one. Doesn't yeah, that isn't that sense? horrifying? Stop listening to music. All types. Maybe Zach Brown band. If I'm just throwing it out there, you know? Your ass in the sand and a beer in your hand. What's more billionaire than that, okay? <clears throat> I don't think Donald Trump listens to music either. He doesn't strike me imagine? as sort of like any kind of humanist. Like, he doesn't seem to possess any kind of real culture to me, but... And now I'm starting to think that I kind of always have had it in me to be a billionaire because I'm a little bit music averse as well. Oh, I feel like yeah. compared to the average person, I like I almost don't like music. I can't, it's just too stimulating. Oh, yeah. If your heart is too, like, compelled by the the transformative and transcendent power that is music, Mm -hmm. that's going to be too distracting from your grind set mentality. You've got to declutter the brainwaves, you know? Like if I'm not revolutionizing the way people work, it's a waste of time. Then the workers are going to revolutionize the way you work, (laughs) let me tell you. I was just thinking about Donald Trump and music. You know what he actually plays for his rallies is like YMCA. Yeah, or um, (laughs) who's that Who's that guy? Strange to anyone. Who's the guy that's like kind of famous that was at his recent rally? Kid Uh, Rock. Was it Kid Rock? Kid Rock was there. Oh, God. Literally the bottom of the barrel. You can't scrape lower than Kid Rock, who also is a rags to riches millionaire posing as a blue collar man of the people. Why is this video more Claymation podcast than the actual Claymation (laughs) podcast? Like, this is feeling so clay. (laughs) Important part of being a billionaire, I think. Firing people. Oh, the best. Being willing to go there. Oh, and, just, and don't be afraid to get fun with it. Do you know what I mean? Bosses are losing their edge and their creative vibrance by holding back. What's the best firing you've ever done? Most creative. Despite the backlash, it's going to be the answer you expect. The bouncy house firing I did. <laughs> because I just felt like that was such a joyful day for everyone. And to have them kind of individually, one by one, come and meet me for a, for a one-on-one in the bounce house, <laughs> thinking that something really special was about to happen. And something special was about to happen. <laughs> Welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. You're not going to be a billionaire working for me. Yeah. I'm literally giving you the chance to become a billionaire in this bounce house. That is literally so inspiring. They did get quite slippery due to all the tears. <laughs> they do not make Americans or bounce houses like you anymore. Make slip proof. Do you know what I mean? Were you bouncing during... Yeah, you got to bounce the whole time. Yeah, okay. Were they bouncing? They during? were bouncing the whole time. When they stopped, I would rebuke them. <laughs> wow, that is so generous of you to realize like, yeah, they could be making under minimum wage for you uh, through some legal loopholes, but you weren't going to you weren't going to let them do that. You weren't going to mm-hmm. let them settle. No. You wanted to encourage them to have the same mindset that you did that allowed you to make all your money. Okay, so some of our top self-made men and first of all, There's only one self-made man in this world, and that's Jesus, Jesus okay? But some other self-made men, uh, Sheldon Adelson, the casino king. So he went from being poor to (laughs) exploiting people's propensity for addiction and compulsion. Isn't that wonderful? Slay, one of my top billionaire tactics. Uh, Build a casino, obviously worked for Donald Trump, okay? He turned a thriving inheritance from his father's real estate industry into an even more exploitative and fraudulent 
empire on casino gambling and uh, mm. racist housing developments, all kinds of stuff. He uh, literally can't operate a charity mm. in New York because <laughs> his uh, charity for children with cancer he was using as a fraud a fraud front. So isn't yeah. that isn't it so fun just to watch the veneer kind of slip? Just like there's like a feeling in the air in it. Like with Trump. With Trump, right now? like think yeah, she no, did. No, I know. Did you okay? Two things. First of all, when he went to the Black Journalist Conference, did you see that? <laughs> the, no. Tana, he's on stage at the Black Journalist Conference, probably because they're just like he's a big name to get. It will get a lot of, you know, I I could imagine you just kind of say yes. I don't know. He's just tanking. Like he has nothing intelligent to say. He's being like racist on the stage. And and the woman interviewing him is like an intelligent journalist woman. And it's just a complete shit show. Then just this morning, I saw a video of him speaking at the Libertarians conference. I saw They all booed him so much. Brilliant. I just, I'm having this weird reaction where like, I feel calm and then I'm like, it like doesn't even register as being calm. I'm immediately like, something must something be drastically must be, wrong. You can't, rely, like, you can't relax. You can't relax. That means something is about yeah. to strike. Like, don't get your hopes up. Yeah. Oof. But it does feel like he'll lose. I'm hopeful. And we and want him to lose. And whatever we can do to help him lose, Waltz? we got to do that. Waltz, VP Waltz, is that his name? I think it's a good choice. Yeah. He, he's the one who was like, he's just weird. Like, yeah. that's a weird guy. Yeah. And everyone was like... Yeah, totally. Fundy Fridays just did a really good video about the history. It was so well researched. The history of purity culture in America. And I didn't realize how much Ronald Reagan was involved in like really funding just objectively unhelpful abstinence only programs. Also, it was very interesting. I guess it's kind of an obvious point, but just seeing her lay it out so well. Every time a Democrat is in office, they take away funding for abstinence only programs. Because like the government is giving like crazy funding under conservative governments to just like, you know, church programs that are teaching abstinence only sex and like get ra- realistically probably using nonprofit money to like rally against abortion and who knows. And then every time a Democrat is in the White House, they'll take that funding away and they'll fund like actual uh, pregnancy planning organizations. But it's just like this constant flip flop in America, Damn. depending on who's in charge. We love it here. Like a Banksy. Uh, so funny. It's not very billionaire of him to be taking a nap, though. I just sleep in two minute increments throughout the day, like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> and Upright I'm horrible. In, a, in a coffin like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Sipping on milk that I stole from the children. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, Reagan was a was a bus. He definitely like helped solidify the quote moral majority sold out to conservative America, or excuse me, not conservative America, but like the evangelicals who before then were kind of seen by the Republicans as just like, ooh, y'all are a bit intense. It's crazy that Donald Trump. I know this is such an obvious point, but like Donald Trump, a man can like overthrow a woman's right to abortion in this country just to like curry political favor with people. He needs to vote for him and he doesn't have a real reason they would vote for him. So he needs to invent like a, a fake one, like yeah. abortion. He doesn't give a shit either way. He's never going to need an abortion. Not not anymore. He's paid for them in the <laughs> past, but. <laughs> the only tycoon, only kind of tycoon I want to be in this world is tycoon. a roller coaster tycoon. Zoo, a zoo tycoon. tycoon. Even zoo tycoon, I just feel like I had so many ethical problems. <laughs> it just started to stress me out. <laughs> Hospital tycoon. That one was fun. With Hospital, the, with the bloaty head. That sounds stressful. Yeah, it was, but you make a killing. <laughs> hospital tycoon? Hospital tycoon. Actually, I think it was called Theme Hospital, that one, but it was the same vibe as like roller coaster Theme tycoon. Theme Hospital. I heard that when the French aristocrats would go to the trebuchet, how did they get killed? The trebuchet. What's it called? <laughs> Why is that the word that came to mind? What's it called? That is so funny. A guillotine? Wait, hang on. Sorry, I'm just imagining What's us a loading. Trebuchet? Like a big ass catapult drops Is that what a trebuchet like, is? Yeah. Trebuchet. That is so funny. We actually should <laughs> put the rich in trebuchets. That would be so much more of a spectacle. They don't. We don't even have to kill them, as far as I'm concerned. I think, I think we need to be more slimer. focused on yeah, more focused on humiliation efforts yeah. rather than. You I bet know, a lot of them have humiliation violence. kinks though. That is true, but like they also have like a ter- They're like like Donald Trump is terrified of being perceived as weird or. What is it? We just learned about billionaires that billionaire men. There's two types. Either men who are just pure evil to their core or men who just wanted their mums to put their artwork up on the fridge and they never did. And they never did. And sometimes they're both. Sometimes they're both of those. Sometimes a little bit of both. Yeah. The duality of billionaire. So if you're a billionaire in the making child right now and your parents are hanging up, your art on the refrigerator, go be an iconoclast, mm-hmm. okay? Shake things up, be a mover and a shaker, tear that art down, 
Throw it up, crumple it up, throw it away, and then get mad at your parents, mm-hmm. okay? Because their love is going to slow you down. It's going to hold you back. If they're not billionaires already, okay, they're holding you back. And don't be afraid to hire smaller, better artists than you in the neighborhood and start claiming their work as your own. That is the perfect solution. that can be quite a boost. And it saves you a lot of time to be working more on your business ideas. The thing I was going to say is about that... About <laughs> About the trebuchets. <laughs> is that when the French aristocrats would go, apparently they would be like really stoic and like not react at all. Both because they didn't want to give people like the satisfaction, you know, the satisfaction, but also because uh, it was kind of part of their superiority complex that like the noblemen should be like better than the peasants, so they should be unemotional. But what this uh, historian on TikTok said is that it actually probably worked against them because because they weren't showing any human emotion, so it just reinforced to the peasants that they weren't. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. Like, lose, lose. Yeah, well, the peasants won that one. Yeah. And then kind of lost it again. And then, yeah. you know, always mm. kind of chaotic, huh? Now France is center left again. That's something. Mm. The genre of, it's not a genre, but I hate the type of song <laughs> where the song is just about how rich you want to become. <laughs> <laughs> Date Ooh, myself. Mark Cuban explains how to become a billionaire with only $500. I have $500. Tana, let's learn. You have six months to make as much money as possible. All you have to start with is a phone and $500 in cash. What are you doing? That is the best question. Poor Tanner knew nothing about making money. I would have texted all my friends and been like, we're having the biggest pizza party you can imagine. Come on over. (laughs) We have to throw the best pizza party this town has ever seen. (laughs) To save the soul of this city. I'm guessing he's going to be like, lemonade stand. Turn the lemonade stand into a sportswear store. Turn the sportswear store into a yacht club. And then it's just like, boom, 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 boom. Boom, like how they teach you growing up that you just kind of like climb the ladder and yeah turn the turn the soda company into a well-regulated militia <laughs> <laughs> i guess what i would do with the 500 is put it into the s&p 500 that is the best question i have ever been asked in my entire adult life he's like i do not interact with many people <laughs> in my position <laughs> what was the best question he ever got asked as a kid do you reckon he's like he had to clear he like i was his, i yeah. had a better question <laughs> When I was a child. That's the best question he's been asked in his entire adult life. Is that a persona he's like, surely not. I am really, really, really good at sales. I'm going to find. A- okay, it's giving Michael Scott right off the bat. Like <laughs> what? I, I, he's not good at sales of me because he's like slamming on the desk. I'm immediately like sensory <laughs> overload. This is way too overstimulating. See, I'm like, I, I'm sold. If, <laughs> if you're telling me insisting with that much aggression that you're good at selling, I'm going to believe it. I am already sold. Sales job. Because I already know I am going to get that job and I'm going to learn more about that industry than anybody on the planet. Mindset. But how does getting a sales job relate to having the 500? I thought the whole point was that you're supposed to, or maybe he's like, I would buy a suit for 500. He bought bought like a $100 Indeed account and then (laughs) spent the rest of it applying to jobs because they're like, it's a $50 (laughs) application fee. He put $15 into his resume design on Fiverr. And I'm going to set a commission as high as I possibly can. And three months in when I've demonstrated that I am the best salesperson in the hit. I mean, if you're a, a salesperson just getting their first sales job, you can't set your own commission, can you? He's like, I would just ask for a lot of money. And it's like, I think if people could do that, they'd already, they would do it. I don't think you set your own, do you? And can, can anyone just walk into a company's and decide I'll to be the 90%. top performing salesperson? I think that's kind of what he's saying. Or is it a, does it take a sort of person who's disposed to being overly pushy? Did he start in sales? Though every good, I don't think he did. So he's never even been, he's just assuming he'd be good at sales. It's like, no, you're probably good at making deals because you have a lot of money, because you're a billionaire. Yeah, and, there, and I'm sure he has like a business kind of marketing mind in some ways, but what he didn't just like show up at his local like phone bank and was like, hey, give me your top, top commission and I'm going to turn this office around. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of rich people... Here's $500. <laughs> rich people, like, don't grasp that it's, like, their experience of, like, work and business is, like, entirely related to the fact that they're a billionaire. So it's, like, for the average, like, 25-year-old guy watching this, like, he's not going to command the same type of sales that you think do you know what I mean it's not really that simple I'm trying to find out if he was ever in sales seems like he maybe did and he said that the key to successful sales helping people I'm gonna walk into my boss's office and I'm gonna tell him you're either gonna pay me this amount of money to keep me or I'm gonna start my own business (laughs) hey this is truly giving Michael Scott paper company what is happening is this real is he doing this is this an SNL skit just walk into the boss of the new job and say you either give me the top 
or I'm going to walk out and start my own business. I'm like, first of all, this is immediately not applicable for any woman. Like, that's just never going to work. Also, what, what you're going to start your new business? Why not just cut out the middleman and start your new business with $500? Also, like, I don't think like the type of sales company that can give you like the incredible income you're going for is going to be like quaking in their boots at the thought that you, someone who has $500, is going to start their own company. Like, no one's going to be like, ooh, and be like, yeah, I will give you the commission you want because I'm so scared of you starting your own company. That's not how any of this works, Mark Cuban. That is exactly what I would do. How was that real? How was, that was my first exposure to who Mark Cuban is. How is that real? Someone said this might be The Office. <laughs> That's just the thing is like so much so about being a billionaire touch. is literally just curating the idea of you as a big, important, powerful person. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, most of these people are coming from a lot of money and even the ones who aren't coming from like billionaire status of money of like old timey colonial committed to genocide in the family name kind of money. There is like still a ton of like more money than what the average person would ever hope to achieve in their life kind of money that's only seen as middle class because such a small chunk of the people at the top have so much of the money that it completely throws off mm -hmm. the ratio, you know? Should we get more billionaire advice? That one, one out of ten. He competed on dancing. Okay, so I think he's like a Trump type where he's like, is just his personality yeah. is showing up and being like, I'm rich. I know how to be rich. Here's what I would do. I'm the best deal maker. Because his whole, he's what he's actually is, seems like he's an entertainer. He's been on Dancing with the Stars and Shark Tanks. We respect a dancing king and hey, all of the sharks. Hi, sharks. Uh, my idea is a dad that says he's sorry. <laughs> Billionaires know this and you don't. It costs you a billion dollars a year not to know how to make a billion dollars a year. And the four easy- Wow, that really put it into perspective for me. Oh yeah. Shit. The cost of not knowing how to make a billion dollars in a year is a billion fucking dollars. A billion. That's how many you're wasting if you're not a billionaire. That was like blowing my mind. That's transcendental. That's like a a It's like koan. a billionaire koan. A coin. A coin. <laughs> which, by the way, I am wearing in my I know, ear. I know, <laughs> The four easiest ways to become a billionaire are figure out how to multiply money without anyone else's effort. Figure out how to capture and multiply. Ideal. Figure out how to grow money on trees. <laughs> okay. You if you can figure that out, then you're pretty much, you know, pretty much golden at that point as far as I'm concerned. Does Mark Cuban have any tips on how he can get the money? <laughs> <laughs> to cure cancer. Okay. So do that. Maybe there's a free idea for you. It's so true though. Like. So much of being rich is literally just like, if you have money, you can multiply that money. Like with no effort on your part, you can just put it in the S&P 500. <laughs> My Vanguard affiliate code in the description below. Just kidding, I don't think they do that. Just like completely useless advice. Cause it's like the average person is trying to pay their bills. They don't, this guy's not even a billionaire. That's what's so funny. But like just this assumption that you have just like a starting amount of investment money. This is the old, my favorite scheme of selling a course about how to become mm -hmm. rich and the way to get rich is by selling a book or a course that teaches Andrew you Tate how to get that. rich. <laughs> and then it was just like, do affiliate marketing. Do yeah. And it's like, this is all available for free. Yep. And he was like, my secret tricks no one was <laughs> never heard of before. Multiply money without anyone else's effort. Or with lots of poor people's effort. Yeah, the Tim Ferriss approach. Figure out how to capture and multiply attention without any incremental cost to you. Smash that comment button and leave your favorite billionaire in the comments below. Figure out how to return time to the masses, which is usually technology. Return, return time, time to, to the, the masses. masses. <laughs> That's why I'm gonna invent the very first time. That's Hermione's fucking. A time turner for the masses. Time invent a time turner, guys. It's yeah, easy. let's let the common folk meddle with space time fabric. It's costing you a billion billion dollars a year not to invent time travel. Get up off of your asses, your lazy asses, and start getting time back to the masses, okay? And then finally, learn how to influence others so that they can behave and act in alignment with what you want. The secret to being a billionaire, make a lot of money without doing any work. It's that Fucking simple. Fucking genius. And then figure out so how simple. to get other people to do less work and make more money. And it's literally that simple. And if you're having an issue with that, it's probably because you're lazy and deserve to go without health care. You don't think us being so open and vulnerable about the fact that we're billionaires is going to cause people to not subscribe to our Patreon this episode, right? I mean, I think it's possible, but being, you know, a moral person and being vulnerable with our audience, I think is more important than any of their measly dollars mm. that they could throw at us We've because keep it real. we do have we to keep it real. Out. That's one I want of being a billionaire is like, be real. I mean, like sell, have a fuck ton of money. Yes. Yeah, so go when they go, when they 
when they sell when high, they high, we go low, we do dirty. Mm-hmm. What's the... Okay, I don't know who this oh, guy this is. Oh, this is the guy. Yeah, this is the guy who started my morning. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> do you want to become a billionaire? Then you have to think like a billionaire. I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to go put on my suit <laughs> right this second. I'm already a billionaire, and a billionaire wouldn't wear a Battle of the Bands tee from college. Uh-huh. No, sir. And if you want a video idea, you've got to become the video idea. Billionaires do not think about pennies and, and cents and dollars. They think big and they think of ways of getting there. That's so true. A, pe- so a penny true. is like that big. That's nothing. Like literally so little space. Not of ways of not getting there. Most people learn how to fail and not to succeed. <laughs> it's so true, Bestie. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. When, when they developed Tesla, everybody thought, Hmm, not a new idea. When Elon Musk built the first Tesla (laughs) with his bare hands with no tools. When Elon Musk gave birth to Nikola Tesla. (laughs) Immaculate conception. (laughs) (laughs) A self-made man yet again. Do you see the videos of uh, Elon Musk's brother talking about how they illegally immigrated to the United States? And he's like, oh, I wasn't illegal. And he was like, it was illegal. (laughs) (laughs) But they were persistent. They were convincing and they could see the art to true con artistry yeah. is confidence, confidence artistry. OK, you got to just insist that, you know, sales, that you are good at selling. Subscribe to our Patreon. You know you want to. You love it. Or you could take the more Speculate hypnotic approach. To accumulate. Just relax and relax and let the joys of Patreon subscriptionship ease the tension in your body. See, there's so many ways. You can be hyperactive or hypoactive. Either way, you're getting that gold. Sometimes we're fighting the Lamanites. Sometimes we're lying on a mossy rock, (laughs) not looking at our sister's immodesty in the pool. People Um, who aren't on Patreon are going to be like, what am I? I must be. They're making jokes that I have heard nothing about. And that must be really hard for you guys. So (laughs) we do suggest joining us there. That sounds like a battle that we know nothing about. (laughs) I know this is obvious, but like every... First of all, all advice from billionaires about how to be billionaires is stupid and bad and not useful and is completely this guy, out of touch. Is he a billionaire? He has even? a vibe of one. I believe that he's one. So, or is he just like another, just kind of like middle class dude who's he might just getting be a rich, millionaire. cultivating the image of himself as someone who knows rich things. All I can say is that all of this advice would not only not work for women. But it would like work against them so hard. If a woman showed up with any of this energy, it would just immediately, everyone would be like, what a bitch. Like they would never. uh, But when a man shows up with this kind of confidence artistry, it's like, yes, double his commission. Then we pay everyone else. (laughs) Otherwise he might start his own company. No, a woman going in like that, they're like, diversity hire. uh." And they could see something that most people did not see. Ghosts. (laughs) Key to being a billionaire, spirit schools. That's how Haley Joel Osmond got there. Sleep your way to the top, poltergeistry wise. Oh my God, I can't believe I said Trump was not a man of culture. He totally loves Silence of the Lambs. He literally thinks Hannibal Lecter was a real and good person. Hmm. So I take that back. One of his heroes. (laughs) The same thing with Google, the same thing with Apple. They were providing something that people were looking for, but they did not know how to put it together. I feel like we weren't looking to fry our neurotransmitters so much that we could barely even connect with our real lives anymore. <laughs> but yet here we are connecting through the Apple iPhone. Everyone in tech and like business is so horny for like Apple and Tesla. It is honestly cringy to hear about. I did hear uh, something interesting on TikTok today. Sorry, I can't remember who said it, but uh, it was probably a recycled thought from somebody who said it 10 mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. But the fact that the richest people in the world are using the exact same cell phones as everybody else in the world. And I mean, not everybody else, obviously, but, and that the cell phone itself is totally a magical device whose power would outshine that of all Mm -hmm. the kings and emperors and royalty that have ever lived in this world. Mm -hmm. People in Palestine are like filming genocide on the same phone that Elon Musk is trolling Grimes from his alt account. It's just (laughs) wild what an equalizing factor technology can be. Did you see that Pierce Morgan is now speaking up about the genocide? Yeah. Crazy. You have to start thinking what will work and not only what will fail. Everyone who's poor is just asking themselves what will fail instead of what will work. It's like such 
wealthy or normative or like have you ever met a person yeah privileged <laughs> to just like assume that you have like anybody has the capacity to like sit around thinking what to do better and not just like oh my god how am I gonna like mm-hmm. get through this next shift of my second job so that I can make sure that my kid is able to go to the hospital for this newfound disease that's overtaking you know it's like yeah Oh yeah, that's that's the problem. Just not thinking mindset enough. You you never really hear a billionaire acknowledging like, yeah, it's kind of fucked up that I have like this many resources. It feels like it's it's like because it's a socially constructed idea, I guess, and like money is fake ultimately. It's like they have to just maintain this story that there's something exceptional about them. But then when you hear their advice, it's like I could give someone better advice for making money than like this billionaire. <laughs> It's just wild to me how out of touch they are and that they would even bother putting themselves out there because I'm like, you're just like showing us that the emperor has no clothes. I mean, for the record, I don't think this guy's a billionaire. I I think he's probably faking for views or, you know, he's some kind of commentator but isn't like one of the richest people in the world. That's my hunch, but I could be way off. What's his name? So he's a CEO. So I bet he's probably not a billionaire, but his name is Zeed Makzumi. So CEO Prime Strategy Consulting Group. He, yeah, he seems like somebody just who's like just trying to curate the uh, the image of himself and others as rich people. But he, it's what's scary is like how many guys that just like have a ton of confidence and no real ethics are able to make a ton of money. Like there, there is, there are ways to do it. It's like every personality isn't suited to it. And it seems like the type of personalities that are tend to, I mean, haven't they proven that like CEOs are way more likely to be soci- sociopaths? Yeah. And like have narcissism. Oh yeah. You um, like kind of have to, yeah, to like yeah. not question yourself in the way that, I mean, there's other, there are ways that narcissism has like, it's not all shadow side, right? Mm-hmm. Like that the same thing has been said about like surgeons that mm. psychopaths make better surgeons because they're never Ooh. questioning themselves. Yeah. They're like just acting deliberately. They don't have the same like fear mechanisms. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hmm, maybe. Mm. <laughs> but then, you like, know, you get them in charge have of a, a lot of fear. <laughs> Like a narcissist is different from, from a, a sociopath. Type, yeah. yeah. Billionaires look at that experience and say, this did not work. What can I learn from it? Growth mindset. You have to so change key. the way you think. Think about it. <laughs> so that you watched that this morning and you were like, so true. Yeah, Firstly, I was like, I need to change that the way you. I think. Because this whole time I've been thinking and identifying as someone who's not a billionaire. And I was like, this is literally costing me a billion dollars a day. Whereas if I started thinking that I had a billion dollars, then boom, I have a billion dollars. This video says the number one way to actually get rich. And then the caption is the fastest way to get rich from not much at all. So is that's it Dave Ramsey and his advice is pray and then get <laughs> throw 10 away to your local pastor? I know. My dad was so into Dave Ramsey growing up. And then I found out recently that he was like really weirdly religious. And I was like, what the fuck? Dad? Like, what? <laughs> anyway, let's find out the number one way to actually get rich, which is also coincidentally the fastest way to get rich, which is great. The f- fastest way to actually get rich today from zero isn't by taking a course, logging on a laptop and trying to make internet money. Because most people that do that and make it are extremely disciplined and self-motivated. So true. <laughs> so Anyone true. making money on the internet has to be extremely motivated and self-disciplined. If they're not, they'll watch other channels grow in <laughs> like exponentially disproportionate time. rates to them you know and, uh, yeah it's never too late to join our patreon guys <laughs> we have a growth mindset okay we're always trying we're all billionaires together in patreon yes individuals which is actually very rare to be and very hard to get yourself to that so he's basically saying like if you have no money don't try and make money through taking a course like skill development or through the internet because there's no way you have the discipline. So he's going to tell us, a dis- I'm imagining, a discipline-free way to get rich, which I think might be ideal. That point. So most of the time, you're just going to be dragging on your life, looking for shortcut after shortcut, wasting your time, money, and energy, especially while you're young. So if you want to get rich and you want it fast and you want it to last, you need to first get around richer friends and richer people. And you can do that by joining a company and joining... Sell nudes. Richer friends, richer people. That's Easy. what I'm always saying. I'm like, I look around at my associates, common peasants, the proletariat, plebs and the like, and I'm like, this is not doing it for me. I see no adornments of luxury. I see no frivolous signs of impossibly high wealth. Mm-hmm. I need to relocate mm-hmm. now. And then I just like, you know, 
I go to the rich part of town, right? We all know where that is. You all have a rich part of town. And then someone and offers you a sales job and you just say, I'll take 100% commission. And they'll be like, <laughs> ah, uh, deal. <laughs> a commission only position with people that inspire you and you can learn from. Live in the apartment with five roommates. It doesn't matter. The knowledge that you're going to learn, the connections. You Start a polycule. <laughs> meet each other's needs. Decrease your, your need for anybody else outside of the bizno polycule. Bizno polycule. <laughs> You'll make and the discipline and experience you'll learn will pay off for you for a lifetime and you have no idea how far you can go. He literally just said it's the friends you make along the way to he, get rich. He did. Could you imagine? You're like, I need to get rich fast. I'm going to go to the rich district. I'm going to find just some rich looking people and be like, hey, do you guys want to all move into my little apartment? We could just like do sales together and stuff. I know, it's like, first eh? of all, your new rich friends aren't going to want to have five roommates with you. So <laughs> when your new rich friends are like, where do you live? You're, you just have to not answer. When they're like, what do you do for work? You're like, uh, I don't know. Do you want to give me a sales job? Like there's nothing that would connect you to these rich people. It's like, I make content online, actually. Unless like you're it. just, a, this is why I feel like so many narcissists also do well in business. Because you know that like alpha boss narcissist type that will just in entirely invent a persona. Like they'll just literally say that they are something to like work their way. People will believe them because they're so confident and that's how they work their way up. Are they confident or have they used the powers of mind over matter to literally become the thing that they believe themselves to be? True. I've taken a jump into something like a commission only sales position. You have no idea how high you can fly by taking the jump into something like a commission sales position. I, it sounds like it's a commission sales position, not something like, like that's the thing you want to be doing according to all these billionaire boy Did bosses. Did he say 100% commission? Or was that our No, thing? I made that oh, joke. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't seem like a good business what's model. What's in it for the company? What's and I know it? my business models. I worked <laughs> as a business model for 10 years. Okay, and it didn't, it paid a lot of money actually. That's one way to get fast is go be a model around businessmen. What do you think Zac Efron is a, is a yacht boy? That's I think I just saw a thing about is, him, yeah. yeah. I also saw that like every 10 years, the proletariat starts getting upset about yacht culture again. Like they forget that it's going on. And it's like, yeah, the rich are on yachts. They're on, they're just driving out to the, to the North Sea mm -hmm. where they can be totally alone and do whatever they want because of the implications. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Ben Shapiro has done a video how to get rich in three steps. Is he uh, rich? I mean, I'm sure he's like wealthy from having a, you know... The way a the conservative uh, pipeline feeds into the... It's all so weird. Like, the, let's just watch Ben Shapiro's advice. It's like, quit your art when they criticize your screenplay. <laughs> okay, then just become uh, a chauvinist online. Pedal angst for the most ornery group of people. Here are the steps that are required to be rich. You gotta finish high school. You don't have babies before you get married. You have to get a job. If you do those three things, you will not be permanently poor in the United States by all available... Med well, that's just simply not true finish high school, don't have babies before you get married and get a job, you won't be poor in the United States. I can absolutely attest that you can be. <laughs> Weird. That's the first step. Then to actually get rich, you have to develop a skill set that people want from- But the last guy said, don't take a course. Don't build a skill set. Yeah, who's richer? Wealth lies at the nexus of three things. Things that you're good at, things that people want from you, and things that you're passionate about. In that sweet spot is where the money is for you. Your icky so it's, guy. It's literally just reading bad Mormon fiction <laughs> for me. <laughs> and that can be in virtually anything. It really can be. Because this is a giant country, and it's a huge international economy. And there are niche markets in pretty much everything. This is a giant country. Why is he simping for America so hard on the video? Because that's like his whole <laughs> thing. He's like, you know, trip a typical American, okay? He's like, I'm like, you know, the average person's idea of a smart person. But it, mostly it's just me like talking like this and kind of, you know, stoking antagonism while giving the idea of being a very confident person. Person. I know people who are loaded as plumbers. I know people who have made an enormous amount of money by starting like cell phone kiosks at the mall. Yeah. I know one person in particular, a good friend of mine. That sounded really convincing. Uh, an enormous amount of money. Cell phone kiosks starting at the mall. a cell phone kiosk at the mall? First of all, how do you even do that? Steal so many <laughs> cell phones. Like, What am I good at, passionate about, <laughs> and people want from me? Another cell mall. Cell phone uh, kiosk <laughs> at the mall. <laughs> I'm already naturally good at it. I was born with a passion for cell phone kiosk at the mall. <laughs> My mother My, said I was cell phone kiosk at the mall before I could talk. I actually chose a um, cell phone kiosk at the mall over my mother. I was like, It's Bye. a calling more yeah, than it is it anything is. else. He literally sold the company for hundreds of millions of dollars. He started off by selling like cell phones at a kiosk in the mall. You can do these things, but you have to find that nexus.
How do you get the money to buy the cell phones for the cell phone kiosk at the mall? Like, I assuming there would be a bit of a, a, a money you'd have to ready to invest for that. All yeah, of these, you, uh, this advice like assumes you have a starting wealth of like a hundred grand that you can just. Like, they all put require into any a little business. capital to begin with, and if you don't got capital, that kind of sucks. But literally, it's as easy as starting a kiosk, a phone business kiosk in the mall. If you literally that's just your nexus. register a business buy all the materials to construct on your own a little kiosk and then spend your daily Rent time money there <laughs> doing that. You're, you don't have time to work another job, obviously, because you're doing the kiosk thing. But but if you own your own cell phone kiosk at the mall, you can give yourself 100% commission. And then if someone comes to you and says, give me the commission I want or I'll start my own rival cell phone kiosk at the mall, you got to give them what they want. We should challenge him to a cell phone kiosk <laughs> off a rival. Be like, we challenge Ben Shapiro. This is official. We are challenging Ben Shapiro to a cell phone mall kiosk contest, okay? And whoever can run the best cell phone mall kiosk in this town wins. I've been doing some research on Mark Cuban. I had him all wrong. He actually was an avid salesperson from the age of 12 years old. Which is about the last time... No, I guess I was an avid sales person as a missionary. But I, too, was a 12-year-old salesman working for my keep, doing tricks at the sidelines of basketball games. And by tricks, I mean cartwheels. People would literally pay me to do cartwheels down the sidelines. You're like your own mascot. Yeah. (laughs) He is an avid admirer of the author Ayn Rand. Okay, I truly cannot stress enough how unhinged getting rich advice is on the internet, which really just reveals that the whole system is bullshit. If you want to get rich with $1,000 in your 20s and 30s, so that could be us, right? We could get rich. You want to get rich with $1,000 and you're in your 20s or 30s and get rich by doing this one thing buy a duplex <laughs> all right easy he's like you guys have been complaining with a thousand dollars you've been complaining about not being able to buy a house you know uh at, in one of the worst markets since the 2008 crash and the great depression but you haven't been thinking about alternative purchases like for instance a duplex I, he literally said if you want to get rich with one thousand dollars buy a duplex i'm like is he you can't even get rent for $1,000 out of duplex. You know what I mean? Like a duplex these days is going for like 1200 to 2400 Like you're not going to find satire? a duplex for sale for $1,000. Maybe Someone commented saying buy a duplex with $1,000. Great advice. And he hearted the comment. You live in a cotton candy house? <laughs> What, how's duplex is even $1,000 in the 70s? Let's just keep watching. Buy a duplex or a quadruplex or a triplex, live in one of the units. Why limit yourself to just a duplex with the thousand dollars? Units, rent out the rest. The really cool thing is when you buy these, there's already going to be tenants in it because that's what a duplex or quadruplex or triplex is. It's an investment property, it's a rental property. So t- Thank you for teaching us about duplexes. <laughs> How is it? I know that these people are out of touch, but I'm like, how is this real? How is this real? If you're a sufficiently wealthy person to avoid, uh, afford just random real estate investments, here's the trick to getting even richer. <laughs> Chances are they're always full. The deposits get transferred between the current owner to you. And then whenever the first tenant moves out, you move into that one. It only costs you $1,000 to buy a multifamily house through a USDA rural development loan. Why would you not do that you got a 620 is it easy to get that type of loan that would just let you buy a duplex why would they give you (laughs) color me curious i want to figure out how to do this i want to buy my little duplex get my little tenants or higher credit score you got two years on the job your debt to income ratios work out i mean if you make thirty five thousand dollars, you can buy a hundred but i have like seventy dollars in my account and my job is this (laughs) that's why well follow us on patreon so tana can buy his dream quadruplex That is kind of crazy if you actually could do that with $1,000 and just a credit score above 620. If you make $35,000, you can buy a $100 home. It's like, yes, but what duplex is $100,000? These days, you're not going to find a duplex in Salt Lake for $100,000. No, the ugliest ones are like... 700,000. If you make 70 grand, you can buy a $200,000 home. And and the cap in a lot of cities is like $107,000 worth of income. So if it's you and your spouse and y'all make less than $107,000, you got to be doing this. He might be on something there. I can't tell. What kind of loan? I wouldn't know either way. USDA Rural Development Loan. Rural Development? It's an Asda Rural Development Loan. Do you have to be rural? You have to be a juror. 
<laughs> well, we'll put a pin in that. Maybe uh, have our butler look into yeah, it. Yeah, if I ever get a thousand dollars, I'll check that out. If you're 20 years old, here's the simplest way to become a millionaire. Let's say. Also, all of these rich things, um, rich videos, make me realize how behind we are. Like we could have been millionaires at 20, according to all of these TikTokers. I can't believe we're settling already for being a millionaire. Boring again. Is that's being like though? the fastest way to get ninth place. You already have a job. You're working normal 40 hours a week, and you're able to cover all your expenses. Now you need to get a part time. Already a huge fucking stretch for a 20 year old in this country. He's like, let's just say all your needs are taken care of easily in a system where people's needs needs are famously not met. Cool. Job or part-time hustle or something that you can get an extra $2,000 per month. If you're working 40 hours a week. I love how they just come up with these numbers. <laughs> and you sleep in eight hours a night. That's 56 hours per week. That 56 hours of sleep plus the 40 hours of work is 96 hours. You would subtract that from 160 hours in each week. You're left with 72 hours. Even if you just took 20 or 30 of those. So true. So do not rest, do not recover. The math is math and yeah. social life. Don't need it. Well, hanging out with rich people who'll give you good sales jobs is kind of going to be... And who will be but your roommates. Like, I feel like <laughs> the five roommates and you will need to hang out to keep the bond strong. All the quadruplex vibes get really bad. Yeah, it can't just all be sales, sales, sales. No. The boys have to go out Networking and celebrate. <laughs> the quadruplex boys. <laughs> Quad boys. <laughs> There's only four in a quad, Derek. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> You're out of the quad. Hours and devoted it to anything than generating income. It could be. Even if you just did a 60 or 70 hour work week. Honestly, I'm saying it. This one's been the most successful one so far. I'm like, these numbers are some good numbers. <laughs> and I do like the color of that tank top. It's And it's true. I do have a lot of wasted hours where I'm not earning 2k extra a month oh i have so many hours that i'm not making an extra 2k or inventing time travel which is even more of an expensive <laughs> mistake <laughs> you'll rue the day <laughs> or not we'll see <laughs> and devoted it to anything than generating income it could be uber or doordash you invest that into an index fund a simple s p 500 and mm. <laughs> I'm struggling to believe that this 20, first of all, how's the 20 year old found a job that's 40 hours, 20 as well, 20 is like, you probably haven't gone to college if you're 20. So I'm like, what 20 year old has found a way to have all of their financial needs met with their 40 hour a week job and then can just afford to put 20, imagine putting 20 hours into DoorDash so you can invest in the S&P 500. That's what I said though, index fund. I, I know think, I think I think, I think there's something to it and I'm going to do that. Not DoorDash, not I, Uber. I do feel like this mindset is like a little bit, like it, he, he is right. Like if you can just find a job and then any, if you can then get a second job, which like already Nightmare to have one job, so really it's not realistic for me. And then you invest, like, yeah. Decent advice. I'm highly suspicious of this advice only because it's not putting all the emphasis on just believing yourself to be a rich person and changing your mindset. He's That's giving true. me actual numbers and a strategy. I don't know about all that. <laughs> Index fund. The average returns of that are about 10% a year. If you, every month you put $2,000 into that, in 20 years you have over 1.3. Wow, I need to start investing. Jesus, I've been thinking like a poor for so long. Where's the index? How does one get an index fund? <laughs> Um, you just create, this is Google real financial stocks. advice for anyone. If you go to vanguard.com and go to personal, create Prove an account, <laughs> then you just can like, you know, deposit any amount that you have, like $200. You can put it into the S&P 500. Then you own a little part of that. In 20 years, you have over $1.3 million. And by the time you're my age, 40 years. Wait, really? If you put two thousand dollars into an index oh every month you put two thousand dollars into an index fund so secret to being rich is just have 24 grand of disposable income you can invest every single year that as a 20 year old it's like it. really easy you guys making two thousand a month on doordash is probably really hard or like uber and lyft they only make like 250 per the average like downtown ride and then it's tips so like it's Which ambitious means you've got to be really offering a unique sales proposition for everyone who's getting into your Uber, okay? You can't just do the run-of-the-mill shit. Like, you got to have a carpool karaoke up in there. You've got to be, mm. um, you know, offering snow cones with those little umbrellas. <laughs> like, you've got to... But you're going to have to invest a little into that. That's true, which is going to put you back billionaire-wise. Snow cone machines can get pricey, yeah. My age, 40 years old, you'll be a f***ing millionaire. It's the simplest way to get rich. I don't know why... Is he a millionaire? 
That's what he would have done. And then he would be one. If gotcha. he would have just known that. that if I had $2,000 spare dollars a month, I believe that I would put it into the S&P 500 and <laughs> become a millionaire in 20 years. The only time I've ever been poorer than I am now is every year prior to this. <laughs> and let me tell you, as a 20-year-old, there's no way, no. This is two extra grand, just God. floating around. I remember being in college and being at the grocery store and looking at a donut and being like... 30 cents, my, my bank account couldn't handle that. Aww. Like, someday I'm going to buy a donut. <laughs> well, it's because a billionaire doesn't think about cents, and that was that the mistake was you're making. So totally. Like, I should have been thinking about, like, company mergers at that point. What did we learn? We learned that being a billionaire is actually way harder than anyone thinks, and it's not mm. about earning the money. That's the easy thing. You just decide that you're a billionaire. Boom, done. But it's the stigma against being mm. a billionaire because you can't even, like, again, topple a country or poison an entire ecosystem and all its inhabitants who require it for their sustenance. You can't even, like, do that without being labeled as, like, a bad person. You can't yeah. even, like, cheat your tax, your country's tax codes to avoid, like, contributing and upholding the systems that you personally benefit from without being labeled and attacked and, you know, not mm -hmm. up, not given all the public nice commentary that you get on the social media platforms that you yourself own. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard out there. So mm -hmm. that's number one. Like, just because, you know, the manifesting is the easiest part, but don't go in thinking it's just going to be a walk in the park and then people are going to like you. For yeah. being powerful. Because you're so smart, you're completely unrelatable to the average person because you are just such an iconoclastic thinker, having strokes of genius constantly, such as buy a duplex, guys. Literally that easy. Or a triplex. It's not hard. Try a little harder. Try a little plex. <laughs> Find your nexus. Find the nexus. Find out what a, a nexus is, first of all. <laughs> Google to find nexus. <laughs> Leave it in the comments below. <laughs> and then the third lesson that we, we got is stop being poor. Yeah. That's, so key. And it starts right now in this moment. That's mm -hmm. kind of the crazy thing. Can about we all it. just decide right now to stop being poor together? Stop being poor. Okay, let's on the count of three say, I'm not poor. One, two, three. I'm, I'm not, not poor. poor. See? And just like that, our mindset has changed. And we're going to walk out of here richer, both in money and in spirit. And in dual home property. Um, I look forward to having you all as roommates. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for five angel investors. <laughs> like five angel roommates. <laughs> oh, that actually is a great show that I'm actually going to pitch to the Sharks. <laughs> It's like we have to live. It's like five guys in a house. We're, we're trying to burgers. become billionaires. Yeah, and be sell we're all sell selling. They're all each selling to each other yeah, constantly. constantly. And it's like, Dude, it's Working on our game. I'm just getting a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a hit. It's like the billionaire advice has the same energy as like pickup artist advice, where it's like this would never work <laughs> in the real world, but it's so cute that you think that it would. You can imagine what it would be like to be successful in this way, even though you like aren't. <laughs> Yeah, it's like already assuming a certain degree of ex mm -hmm. access, aptitude. Pers yeah, there's so much that goes into it. But, you know, I did like, I actually did like the guy who was like, do a little hustle. Yeah. And put it in this place. That's like, at Tanner, least is this helpful. the year you invest in the S&P 500? Is this the year I make anything to invest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I've been, I, maybe if I save the money that I've been saving from not ordering DoorDash yeah. by making real food. Instead of ordering DoorDash, become the DoorDash. Become the DoorDash, yeah. Think like a DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> Did yours and Ash's DoorDash curse get lifted? Well, we haven't been DoorDashing, so I guess uh, we lifted it of our own accord. It's one of the best ways to lift the curse. <laughs> yeah, it's just ignore Complete it completely. Detox, yeah. Disempower it. Yeah, we've been making such good food because Purple Carrot puts mm. all their menus online for free. Even if you're not using the service, you can just figure out what they're doing and it's all really really good we had these hearts of palm fab cakes last night hearts of palm hearts of palm 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 like a palm tree he, yeah hearts of palm wow gorgeous anyway is a heart of a palm delicious yeah it's kind of like an artichoke or something that sounds in right. that family i'm just completely guessing but grassy but it was like formed into a fab cake we don't have to get a into fab this. cake what's a fab cake like a crab cake, oh, a crab cake. <laughs> but it's fab because no crab. <laughs> what is there an AFAB cake? <laughs> I'm not talking about cakes anymore. A crab. All crabs are bastards. <laughs> I don't want to see them in the ocean. <laughs> the immediate Boston accent. <laughs> 
All right. Thanks All right, for watching. Well, if you're a crab and you want to be in <laughs> yeah. the ocean with us. Simply get a bigger shell. Move into it. <laughs> Rent out the other side. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Love you. Have my... fun being rich. I love you, billionaires. I'll see you at the next Forbes meeting. Whatever. <laughs> Remember... Dump all your poor friends, okay? Seriously, it's the best business advice we can give you. That's right. We'll see you at the apartment later for our, <laughs> our sales pitch training hang. <laughs> it's gonna be a also, hit. we need to talk about the downstairs toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and Derek, you're on fucking thin ice. <laughs> <Hey, bye. laughs> Derek's like, sorry, Monocle. <laughs> bye! Bye! <laughs>